Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, you're looking at the modern Emperor of China, and I say that in no jest. This is the Cartier Ballon Bleu XL Chronograph, and would you believe that since its 2006 introduction, this model line, the round-cased Ballon Bleu, has become Cartier's number one worldwide seller and their leading reference within the Chinese market. So given that this Ballon Bleu has become so distinctive, emblematic, and significant within the Cartier catalog in the modern era, it's no surprise that three years later, Cartier began to flesh out the model lineup with a chronograph reference. Launched in 2009, the Ballon Bleu chronograph, here in its XL variant, takes everything that was incredibly successful, aesthetically pleasing, and distinctive about the Cartier Ballon Bleu, and it puts it in a chronograph format, dial and case. And this one's remarkably well integrated in as much as the chronograph pushers and the chronograph features of the dial integrate almost seamlessly into the original Ballon Bleu shape. It was designed as a flexible platform, and this Cartier Ballon Bleu chronograph succeeds on those terms. Now, first and foremost, I want to put it on the wrist and talk about the fit of it, because the Ballon Bleu wears a little bit unique. Now, 47 millimeters, 18 karat rose gold. This watch wears a little bit smaller than its nominal size. The lugs are exceptionally short, almost non-existent, as you can see. In fact, you could almost argue that the bolstering of the strap is thicker than the actual span of the lugs themselves. You can see how thick the strap is. Very well built, French hand-stitched brown alligator, but again, almost dwarfs the lugs by comparison. Now, the integration is quite beautiful. Cartier does a great job here because a lot of watches that are on straps they leave an unsightly gap between the lugs, the strap, and the case. And this watch manages to integrate the strap to the case and the lugs without the major kind of downside of that setup on so many watches. Many watches that have the conforming strap and conforming lugs that eliminate the gap also force the strap to flare out like so, extending the case with kind of virtual diameter. This doesn't do that. It can pull straight down to the wrist very sound ergonomically. You can tell that although this watch features all of the classical Cartier styling motifs, it was designed with modern watch use, human wrist size, and ergonomic science in mind. Now, because the watch is basically, if you want to think of it as a cushion case, you can. It's about as wide as it is tall, even with the lugs. It distributes its mass very nicely, and the evenly shaped rounded case back, you can see that right there peeking up, sits very softly upon the wrist, really nestles right in, makes for a close fit. Now, the Ballon Bleu is a, a rounded, bosomy shape, and it always has been, with a lot of compound curves and complex forms, and that really works in your favor when using it as a dress reference. Just about any Cartier watch, with the exception of perhaps the Calibre Diver and some of the more aggressive Roadster XL models, are quintessential dress watches, and the Ballon Bleu is a champion among them. Just about any sleeve, no matter how formal, no matter how tight, is going to be able to flow up and over this case flank because of the tremendous amount of tumble home. It's almost like a dewdrop settling on your wrist, a very large, very expensive dewdrop, but beautiful because of it. And you can also see the charming swell of the crystal dome. That sapphire is not just domed, it's very domed. It's accentuated. It becomes part of the flow of the shape. There's less of a distinction between flank and case and lug than there is just a seamless continuity between them. And you can see how that extends to the chronograph pushers and the crown guard on the opposite side. Now I want to talk a little bit just about my wrist size and the proportions of the watch. My wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters. So for those who are watching out in cyberspace, uh, those are your reference points. My wrist is roughly oval, fairly standard in shape, a little bit on the smallish side. I feel that a wrist down to six inches uh, in circumference could easily wear this watch. It's, again, nothing like the other 47 millimeter watches on the market. If you think 42 is pushing it and 45 is way too big, I think this 47 will jump out and surprise you because it is a very comfortable, very well-considered shape on Cartier's part. They really kept the end user, the human-sized end user in mind when they designed this Ballon Bleu XL chronograph. You can see that charming distortion that forms because of the extreme domed shape of that crystal. It really becomes a styling feature and visual animation in its own right. It's part of the effect of this watch, and this watch has a stunning effect because it is so well-conceived. Now, because it's a modern Cartier reference, complications were considered during the design process. Older designs like the Tortue, the Santos, 
the tank. They were designed in the era before we thought about putting dates and chronographs and subsidiary functions on watches, whereas the Ballon Bleu was designed with those functions in mind. So you can see how Cartier was able to integrate the chronograph into the essential shape. Nowhere is the rounded, ovoid, bosomy, compound curve form of the watch fundamentally disrupted by the addition of the subdials or the pushers. And I'll note that the pushers also have a rounded arc to them in as much as they trace the curvature of the case. They look like rectangular section pushers, but they actually have a little bit of camber from side to side. So they do trace the arc of the case, and they're beautifully integrated as they project no higher than the existing and iconic Ballon Bleu crown guard. Now, just a little bit of background on the Ballon Bleu basically means blue balloon, and that name derives from the large, distinctive Cabocon crown, much larger and more prominent than on most Cartier watches. Most Cartier watches do feature the Cabocon sapphire in blue, but it's not nearly as pronounced a feature of the styling as it is on the Ballon Bleu. And that large crown guard is, is sort of an homage to classical Cartier styling features like the canteen crown of the Pasha and others. And the bottom line is that this watch, if it weren't a chronograph, just looking at it at first glance, it is pure Cartier. There is nothing about this watch that says, I could not have been designed in 1917, 1920, 1930. Everything about this watch reads as distinctive of its brand. And I would say, unlike some of the perhaps more recent additions to the Cartier catalog, this one definitely seems organic to their style and their styling sensibility. Plus, it has legitimate horological credentials. Now, all of the traditional Cartier features are here. Guilloche dial turned on a rose lathe, the large, bold Roman numerals with the Louis Cartier signature at 7 o'clock. You see that there are multiple tones created by different finishes on that silver dial, and of course, beautiful baton hands, heat blued for dramatic effect and contrast. But there's more going on, because the content, as I alluded earlier, is completely credible, and there is legitimate watchmaking going on here. Cartier is part of the Richemont group, indeed, forming the early nucleus of the Richemont group as the Vendôme group. At the beginning of Richemont's tenure as one of the world's largest luxury manufacturers, Cartier joined the fold. And it wasn't until about two decades later that Jezier Lecoult joined with it, but the benefit for Cartier has been access to JLC watchmaking savoir-faire. And what you're seeing right here is the Cartier caliber MC8101 based on the Jezier Lecoult caliber 750 chronograph column wheel actuation of all chronograph functions with a vertical clutch engagement. It is smooth, it is crisp in the hand when you start and stop the chronograph. It has a nice crisp rifle bolt feel under, under the hand. Resets perfectly, starts and stops without stagger or jump. JLC watchmaking savoir-faire here. Beautifully done. It's simple, but it's competent and it's completely sober. It's just like that silver dial. Cool but sophisticated and refined just enough to impress without showing off. And you're getting all of the best of JLC's watchmaking expertise between the column wheel to actuate the functions, the vertical clutch to engage them, and if you prefer center seconds on your watch, as opposed to subsidiary seconds that you see on most chronographs, because it's a vertical clutch, you can run the chronograph full time and have that center seconds hand for easy viewing and aesthetic, basically, pleasure. But there's more going on here, too, because ceramic rotor bearings are used. They're unlubricated. They never need to be lubricated. So that actually reduces the maintenance requirements of the watch. Plus, because it's based on the JLC caliber 750, you get 65 hours of power reserve. Highly efficient, unidirectional winding mechanism. It's like the best of both worlds. You get Cartier style, and you get Jezier LeCoult watchmaking content. This is a watch that succeeds on both fronts, mechanically and aesthetically. And as part of the Ballon Bleu collection, it's something of a modern icon and a contemporary classic for Cartier. So check out this Cartier Ballon Bleu XL Chronograph 18 karat rose gold on our website Watch You Want. This is equipped with 100% original Cartier boutique equipment. Everything you would receive, boxes, manuals, paperwork and accessories, plus the instructional DVD from Cartier, is available from Watch You Want with this Cartier Ballon Bleu XL 18 karat rose gold chronograph.